This meeting is being recorded uh, and will be posted on the LaPorte County Purdue Extension YouTube channel. Tomorrow an email will go out with the link and also a copy of uh, the pre-fair schedule that we'll be covering today. So a couple of things I'd like to mention to make sure that uh, everybody has heard, the, mo the uh, meeting moves along clearly. Uh, first off, I would like you to mute by default. What that means is if you can mute automatically uh, when you're not speaking so that we don't have feedback. What happens is when a computer enters a room or a phone enters a room that has the meeting on it with the computer, we'll get horrible feedback and it, we'll see which boxes light up that have that feedback. So if you could please mute, that would be wonderful. Um, we want to listen and hear everybody out. Uh, this year's schedule not only has to deal with the end, hopefully, of a pandemic, but also that um, July 4th holiday keeps uh, sneaking in there and uh, gives us a challenge here and there where we have to tighten up our schedules. So if there are thoughts, would love to hear them in the support of youth in 4-H. Uh, positive possibilities. Please be open to new ways of doing things and offering uh, positive feedback regarding uh, this meeting. And I'm a big fan of press pause. If we hit a point where it, it seems like the discussion is going way further than what it should or we need to take time to think about an issue, We'll press pause. I also call uh, placing it in a parking lot so that we can keep moving forward. We'll take note, press pause on the topic, but we'll get back to it. So does anybody have um, any thoughts before we start out? What I want to uh, do here, I will share my screen and you're going to just see the top half for right now. So here is the beginning of our pre-fair schedule. Please know um, that we have a health and safety plan that we have to create um, and it will be in conjunction with the fair board as well. Uh, they have a safety plan they have to create. We have to create one. I hate to see how many pages uh, this document will be at the end, but we have to make sure that we have plans for the health and safety of everybody, kind of a plan A and a plan B. We never want to go back to a virtual only fair. I didn't care for it, but it's, it's what we had last year. So this year we're looking at a uh, best case scenario where maybe it's just a mask mandate going into buildings. Uh, plan B would be maybe we have to limit the number of people going into buildings. Um, we definitely want kids in front of judges. If we have to limit the number of adults that are in the building at the time, time judging's going on, we may have to do that. It all depends on that um, <laughs> COVID-19 advisory level general requirements. It's pesky. It keeps going up and down. Not, not too happy with it right now. It's, it's going up. So anyway, you'll see our first um, event is taking place Sunday the 27th. That will be the 4-H CAT uh, judging event. Uh, we'll be holding that in the small projects building with setup day being Monday after that. Um, we are hoping that we can rally volunteers to get fixtures into buildings that weekend. So maybe Friday, Saturday, um, and then be able to uh, get going with our setup day. 
volunteers of, and youth, please come out. As you all probably know, there's a job for everybody. Um, because fair is starting on Saturday, we decided to move mini 4-H to a different day. So we knew our minis um, were not in the mix of a very busy day. So uh, we have on Thursday, July 4th, where we are going to check in mini 4-H projects. And then we'll follow up with a bicycle rodeo. It, not sure yet where on fairgrounds. Um, I need to talk to fair board as far as what looks like a safe place uh, for that to be. Um, I've even thought if we need to, we can take it out into the, I guess it would be south, um, south uh, drive just behind our office. We could create a bit of a, a drive course for them along with the pet parade uh, being that same night. Um, there is a bit of a change regarding sewing. It is happening on Tuesday, July 6th, with the location being at the First Church of God. This way, there's a stage for fashion review that evening. It's all in one place. So it doesn't take so many resources to bring a stage in, take it out. Um, it's going to be held all in that one spot. So check-in and judging will be there for sewing, consumer clothing, wearable art, and fashion review. And let me mention, if you see an error somewhere going through this, please note it in the chat box, or if you have a question, note it in the chat box. MJ is watching um, for comments. Um, we've had office staff look over this, we've looked over this, but you know, it could be a hundred times and there's still an error. So anyway, um, super happy that that's going to be in one location. Staff will be um, at the church to check people in. It'll be wonderful. In the afternoon, will be farm model, shooting sports, and sports fishing. Uh, they will be by themselves in that building. A lot of times they were in with the uh, large check-in day, which is Wednesday, and we're hoping to give everybody a little more space. Excuse me, there's a gnat around here. But anyway, um, we've, we've given them a little more space. So checking in on Tuesday the 6th from 3 to 5. Let me see, oh good. So then on Wednesday the 7th is that large static project check-in time. We have uh, moved it to a four to six time slot. Check-in and judging happening from four to six. This will allow judges some time in the evening uh, if they need to ponder about state um, winners. Uh, this also allows families the opportunity to not have to take off another day for judging. We had many comments come back saying, you know, we take the week of fair off and then we're having to take full days off two and three times the week of judging. So uh, we're going to try this this year. If it doesn't work out, we'll, we can make a judge, uh, make a ju adjustments moving forward in the coming years. Photography, however, will be the next day. Photography is typically in that big static project uh, judging day. Photography is a very large project and it takes way more than two hours for uh, youth to be checked in, for projects to be judged. Uh, we felt uh, because uh, pre-fair check-in is happening right up to fair starting. We knew that that would complicate uh, commercial buildings. We don't want to be in the way of fair board setting up, of course. So we moved photography to Thursday, July 8th, and they will have all day to be by themselves in small projects buildings. So our hope is once they're checked in, judged, 
then they can be set right up on displays. Um, and it's not carrying it across the road, trying to make it as easy as possible. We have foods on Thursday, um, along with uh, cake decorating, 4-H uh, cake decorating. Cake decorating and gift wrapping will not uh, take place on site. They will be like other projects where they are brought to judging. However, we want to allow time for 4-H cake decorating to uh, possibly uh, assemble once they get to a judging site um, before judging takes place. So that's that one to two checking in. If we need to allow more time for that, we can certainly do it. Everybody will be in that building, so um, that time can definitely be adjusted. And then we go into the 4-H dog project, which starts on um, Friday. Because we're taking into account COVID and not knowing what the advisory level will be, we wanted to offer a time period Friday evening where seniors, tenure members, and volunteers can, can go through and preview the exhibition themselves. So that's taking place Friday, July 9th from 5 to 6.45. Um, so many times I've seen volunteers working away during fair and never get a time to really walk through the buildings and see the, the projects um, that the kids in their clubs have completed. Um, sometimes even their own children's projects, they don't have the time to get there because then they become busy with the animal end of things. So uh, we want to provide that opportunity for, um, for those members and volunteers. And then we are looking at, because of FAIR starting on Saturday, having the 4-H 10-year and Senior Recognition Night that Friday night at 7 p.m. Let me... Okay. Uh, again, that calendar will be sent out to you tomorrow. Um, we are still working on the fair schedule. Uh, we have one more session in this office where all eyes will be on the calendar to try and make sure that we catch any errors, any double booking of times or places on that schedule. Uh, we also want to make sure the arrivals and departures that were um, provided by Fair Board um, are noted on that calendar. And something that's new and exciting is our tractor and zero turn project will be able to uh, do their demonstration during fair week. That date hasn't been determined yet, but it's really nice that our area contest has moved its deadline back um, so that these, these guys, these girls and guys can participate in that project in front of a bit of a crowd. So we wanna make sure that's on the calendar so everybody can go over and um, watch their skills with the equipment. So um, I believe that is it. Um, I, I don't think it's new news that the fair is starting on Saturday. I think everybody has gotten that notice. Um, are there, I guess, any questions? Does anybody have any questions? You can either enter it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself. Gail, this is Andrea Mitzner. Hi, Andrea. I jumped, I jumped in a little bit late. Um, can you refresh me on what you said the mini 4-H check-in dates were? Uh, it will be on Thursday, July 1st four to six, and Andrea will be sending this calendar out to you tomorrow. Okay, I'm just clarifying, because when I jumped in, I thought you said July 4th. 
And I'm oh, like, no. wait a minute, that's not going <laughs> to work. That's why I wanted clarification because I yeah. would have lost I would have lost sleep over that. No, no, so, no, no. Okay. I got my I got my F's messed up. First and fourth. Yep. So okay, thank you. Uh-huh. And the reason we stayed off of Monday, July 5th is that is a county holiday and we want to allow our support staff um, to take that holiday off. So that made the schedule a little bit tighter too in losing that Monday. I do see Katrina has her hand raised. Oh, I am sorry. Okay, I was trying this new little thing that I yes. found. I was like, oh, that's a cool <laughs> button. Um, <laughs> anyway, will the animals be a um, come in, show, go home? We like, don't know yet. We, it depends. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we want it from what I have discussed, and I'm sure MJ, MJ has had the same message. We have that plan A, plan B. So when it comes to animals, the, the tighter the COVID advisory, it would have to be something like that. Or a one day show where you can spread everybody out, maybe, um, maybe have different age groups on different days. Um, we're not gonna go back that far. I believe that. So, but that would be worst case scenario. Um, from, your mouth, from your mouth, Gail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, personally, I'm more concerned about people in buildings because the advisory is so strict on people in buildings when it comes to open air areas. Um, if we need to put marks on benches, you know, to keep people distance, we can do that. Um, but the, the buildings are what I'm most concerned about. Um, that either we place the worst case scenario, we have to count the number of people that enter the building um, and one way in, one way out. Luckily, both buildings have a entrance and an exit. So if they don't double back, you know, we have a good plan there as well. So I hate to say we don't know yet, but it's, mm -hmm. I didn't expect the advisory level to change like it has recently. Uh, Kim had asked, what is the YQCA deadline? The YQCA deadline is May 15th um, with, yeah, um, there is a Facebook post. Uh, the date was also put in the 4-H bulletin. Um, we're doing a super Saturday due to, um, I know some people are wondering why we're only doing one date. We do have restrictions on where we can host it um, because of the advisory levels um, and capacity being at 50%, even at the small projects building right now. Um, it's April 24th. And on the actual YQCA website where kids log in, there's multiple timeframes. And as we have need and interest, we can add more in the later afternoon as well. Um, but they start at nine and the sessions run about an hour. Um, so April 24th, starting at 9 a.m. No, we are going to stay in touch with the various committees to make sure they are aware of what kids in their projects have taken YQCA. Um, we've been successful with this approach in the past years um, where they've all done an amazing job making sure the kids stayed on top of it. So, you know, what we're, what we're, our constraints are is the technology yeah. to support the presentation and then add on top of it COVID restrictions. So we're looking at, we've been given the permission by the sheriff to use his side office and that um, internet connection. Ooh, okay. Hopefully nobody fell. That internet connection. Yes, <laughs> oh, okay. That internet connection. However, right now we're at 50% capacity again. So then we're down to where before we were heading up out of it. We're also looking into, can we, if we keep everybody in chairs, use the school standard of three feet apart. 
so we can add people in. Uh, so those are all minute details that have caused a challenge and a half, but we will get everybody certified. We will get everybody um, certified. They can still do online as well. Um, I know it is more expensive. There's a $12 option and there's also a test out option if they're in the first year of that division. So first year junior, I think it's then first year intermediate and then first year senior. Um, so, and you would have, they would have to pay the amount of years they have left in that division. If that makes sense. Um, for, um, as of right now, are we allowed to run workshops in person? Um, are you meaning project workshops? If so, yes, as long as you have an approved safety plan. Same with, with meetings. You can do things in person. They just have to have an approved um, and submitted safety plan to us. So um, if we hold clinics um, for horse and pony, we have our safety plans in place at the locations, then we're fine to have our clinics. Yes. Okay. Um, but if you have submitted a plan and then your location changes, you have to let us know so we can update that. Yeah, we have three locations. Yeah. So as yeah. long as you have safety plans for those locations, you're fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. And just a note, if you are submitting safety plans, uh, I believe we're about a week to a week and a half, uh, the time taking a week to a week and a half for plans to be approved. So please keep that in mind. Uh, we try and get them in immediately. As soon as we get them, they go in because we don't wanna hold anybody up. Um, if you are looking for an example of a safety plan, because this whole idea is overwhelming to you, let us know. We can send you copies of safety plans, um, ones that have been approved so that it's a quick enter it and then um, and approved. If you change meeting date, but not location, do you need a new safety plan? No. no. It's based on the location. When is the projected date that you can start, committees can start having their um, meetings in the office? Right now, the office is at uh, the COVID advisory level of 50%. So that's where we're looking. Can we sit chairs three feet apart? and fit more than 10 people. Because right now, our office conference room holds 10 people. Okay. So that's the difficulty we're running into with uh, so, this space. So you could only have five at your committee meeting then, is that what you're saying? No, uh, I'm or sorry, two. Andrea, 50% is 10. Two. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, we were thinking when we opened up, we'd be in a good place to be able to get everybody back in using our conference room. And that unfortunately has not been the case. So. Um, okay, you may have stated this before. And like I said, I entered late, sorry. What is, what is the county at right now? I am currently unaware of what our level is. Last I saw, I believe we're at back one and a half. Is that orange? Yep, we're back at orange. Really? Yes, okay. which is 50%. Okay. It's like looking at the morning paper and it's frustrating as heck. Yes, it is. <laughs> so we have, we, we really believe that things are going to change and we could just get rolling. County building was opening up. We just opened the county building last week. Um, everything was by appointment. So um, as soon as we know this county building is available, 
Um, we want to hold some mini 4-H events here. Um, so, uh, Nancy, right now, um, Nancy asks, what is the number for small projects building? Um, right now, we are currently the 50%, so 25, because we can only use the front portion, or they're calling it side A, because the back area is still being used to hold county um, PPE equipment. Thank you, Susan. Uh, we're at one and a half, which is yellow. That's still 50%. Um, we're not at orange. We don't want to go to orange. So we're at yellow. My apologies for that. Not that I want to, not that I want to turn this into a COVID meeting, because um, honestly, I'm sick of talking about it. Not sick of talking about, I'm sick of talking about COVID. Um, it's kind of funny because I was on a farmer's market meeting today for Chesterton, and they said they are going back to their rules of pre-COVID. No masks, no social distancing, no rules, and that's Chesterton. And I'm just, I'm just so surprised how different LaPorte County is from Porter County or vice versa. Yes. And I'm like, we're the same people, so why <laughs> is everything so different? I agree. I, I Wish I knew. And then you look at Michigan. Michigan seems to be going off the radar again. It's as far as cases. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, their cases are increasing. So um, Michigan's a petri dish. <laughs> is that is that Ruth? No. no. Jolie, right? <laughs> yeah, there are petri dish up there. Okay, I'll stay away then. <laughs> okay. Living yes, in since... Michigan, I would like to. I would like to um, say I. I think youth sports is what has changed up in Michigan. So, um, being a Michigan resident. Um, I, I believe that's the cause. I don't. I, I don't feel we're a petri dish. Thank you, Jane. Um, thank you, Angela. Yes, the Indiana uh, Health Department posts the levels every Wednesday. So. Um, Okay, I see Susan Banwert has her hand raised. I had a question back to um, YQCA. Um, so in, in the past, some of the uh, projects have given uh, youth vouchers. For example, beef and poultry in the past have given vouchers. Are any of those folks on tonight? Um, I haven't read anything that any of the uh, animal projects have, are planning to do vouchers. Chris, I see Chris Colasa is on. I do see Dave Hester's. He was in charge of the beef coupons or vouchers. I'm not sure how many they had left over from 2019. Here's Chris. Um, Chris, yes, could uh, you speak for poultry? Yeah, poultry is going to be passing them out Friday at the workshop or if they call me. I have 52 vouchers to pass out. So yes, yeah, Susan, tell Paige to talk to me in school on uh, uh, Thursday. Hey, uh, Chris, are the, are the vouchers um, for the in-person, they're, they're $3 regardless of how you use it. Is that how it works? No, Any, I don't are, remember. These are only for the in-person. And if they picked up a voucher last year and didn't use it last year, then it is still good this year. There is no expiration on it. So, and if you can find yours. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we do, poultry does have 52. Thank you, Chris. Um, this is Andrea, just a question because I'm unaware of these vouchers. So um, are, are the, like the committees picking up the cost of the voucher for the child to do the YQCA, is that the reason for the voucher? 
Yes, so committees can purchase on the YQCA.org. They can purchase vouchers for the youth. Um, so depending, we can run a report of however many swine kids we have um, that have signed up and um, let you know the number so that you, if your committee wants to purchase vouchers, then you can do that. So then does the office then actually like print a paper voucher that we hand out or how, how does that work? Because I'm completely... When you purchase it on their website, they, I believe they will send you the coupons. Okay. And then um, the committee would need to, you could create a spreadsheet of the coupon numbers. That's how I've seen some committees do it. Um, and then you would just keep track of who you assign those coupons to and send them the code. So then when they go to register and sign up for a course, they'll enter that coupon code in there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And they do have vouchers for the $12 ones and the $3 ones. So it just depends what you want okay. to do. Chris, did you want to add anything to the conversation about the vouchers? I saw you popped on. No, that's what we did. Like at the workshop, I hand them the voucher, but I actually keep a spreadsheet with the numbers. So in case the child would lo lose theirs, I have a code for them. And I've actually even had parents um, email me and I've scanned them and sent them the voucher. So I've worked both ways. And uh, thank you, Julie, for mentioning Dairy um, has youth pay for their YQCA um, uh, training, but they take $3 off stall fees for fair. So it just depends on how your group would like to handle it. I just, got oh. I just got informed from one of my swine committee members um, that we probably will not do the voucher just so if you have members in your club or your children, um, the swine committee is waiving the fee of the vaccination and the tags. Wait, let me make sure I said that right. Yep, the tags and the vaccinations. So that cost would be more expensive than the YQCA. So that's what we are doing. Okay. Um, what will happen after um, we send out the recording and a copy of this schedule to you all tomorrow. Um, we'll begin to work on the other calendar, firming it up. Once we have everything on that calendar, we'll also send it out. And then our office will be contacting you to see, will you be able to support uh, the judges at uh, the different judging events? Um, we're we're taking this a step at a time. Should we need to really limit the number of people in a building, we don't want all these people coming in that day and then have to take everybody out. So uh, thank you for your patience in stepping this one step at a time with us. Um, it's, it's very small steps that we have to take to get through this um, and set up and the biggest thing we want is for the kids to have their project in front of judges and be able to talk to the judges. So um, we've even had to talk about what plan B may look like as far as static project. We're even looking at potentially having um, a table in front of each building where uh, we will be scan checking projects in this year using a scanner once the project are check in, uh, if it's good and we can allow them through, we'll allow the family through and count and allow those kids through. If we have to number uh, or keep track of the number of people in the building, we'll then allow the child with their project in through to the judge 
and ask family to stay out. Um, so, and also know, going back to many 4-H, we have many 4-Hers that will bring their projects in on July 6th. They'll come in with their siblings to different judgings and they'll say, can I give you my project now? That's fine. We just wanted to provide a time where it was pretty much many 4-Hers and if they were ready to drop off their project at that time, great. Um, if not, uh, they can bring it in when they bring their siblings uh, or come in with their siblings projects. So, any other thoughts? Okay, we appreciate uh, you joining us. Um, and your patience through COVID, um, and we'll keep keep you in communication between. Please watch the uh, bi-monthly bulletin that comes out to you. I know it has a lot of information. Um, it's for the 4 h -er that may want to participate um, in a traditional setting club, but then too may also want to participate on a larger scale with things down at campus. So we're making sure those opportunities are in there as well. Uh, but please look, there is a volunteer calendar on there. Um, there is a, a member or club calendar on there. Um, we're, hope, we're just fine tuning this week after week as we hear thoughts. Um, Yes, I'm hopeful that the Pee Wee Animal Projects are still still going through. And the reason why that's not mentioned on this pre-fair is because that takes uh, place during fair. So that's just not the calendar we're looking at right now. But yep, my hope, all going to, I know, cannot wait, <laughs> cannot wait. I was actually pretty excited about this meeting even to be able to start talking about all of this. So. Well, thank you all very much for joining. Um, if you have questions, do not hesitate to contact the office. Um, if you have thoughts on anything after you have a good night's sleep, feel free to reach out to us. And uh, I look forward to seeing everybody soon. Have a good evening. Take thank care. Thank you.